All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I just want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakha Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and salutations unto the elect. Now, I pray that this lesson, you know, is edifying unto the elect and that it's easy to be understood. And I just wanted to go into the topic of having patience and waiting for the coming of our Lord. Okay, and um, many men, you know, before, you know, many men have fell off, you know, and they really, why they fell off is because, you know, they lacked patience. They couldn't wait no more, you know, they couldn't wait, you know, for the coming of our Lord. Okay, because they expected the Lord to come on their time. No, no, um, you know, the Lord Yahweh, yeah, Yahweh works on his own time, man. Not according to you when you want, want it to happen, but he works according to his will. You know, whatever he wants to do hey, is going to happen according to his will. Okay, so that's where many people get it messed up. You know, they bug out because of that, because they think that the prophecy that you know, the prophecy of our Lord coming back is going to come when they expect it to be. So they end up losing patience. You know, they stop waiting upon the Lord and they stop doing the works and turn back into the world, man. Okay, but, you know, in this lesson, I'm here to tell you, man, or exhort, you know, the hopeful elect, you know, to be patient and wait. Okay, and I just wanted to go into that word patience. And it says, uh, the 1200, uh, 1200 patience, the quality of being willing to bear adversities calm endurance of misfortune suffering okay etc okay and that's uh i want to get that word suffering all endurance sufferings ad bear adversities that all those all you know go into having patience right because you know in this in this truth in this world shoot we're gonna you know endure many many sufferings you know we're gonna endure many trials and tribulations man but we have to endure and persevered through the suffering, you know, and uh, hold on fast, you know, to this truth, man, and wait for the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. You know, wait upon the prophecies, which, you know, the prophecy of our Lord, Lord coming back is, you know, the last one. That's that's a prophecy right there, you know. You know our Lord Yahweh Shai coming to crack the crowd, crack the clouds, like you. Okay. So we have to endure, you know, endure all the trials and tribulations in hopes to be saved, man. Okay, so let's get Matthew. Let's get uh, Matthew 10 and 22. Okay, so Matthew 10 and 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Right. So when we endure and be patient. You know, ultimately, we're going to be saved when our Lord Yahweh shall come back, man. He's going to deliver his elect and the elect are the ones that are going to endure. That's why we call ourselves of the hopeful elect. You know, because hopefully we can endure, you know, until our, the coming of our Lord. You know, because the Lord is coming back to destroy and to deliver. Okay, and hopefully, you know, by our works, you know, and by our faith, you know, ultimately by our faith, we hope that by our faith we'll be saved and not destroyed. You know, because ultimately, hey, ultimately, then the prophecy of our Lord, yeah, how is that coming back, is going to happen. You know, and we want to be found you know, worthy to be saved, man, not destroyed, because the Lord is coming to, to destroy. Okay. So, um, let's get, um, Habakkuk to we'll get straight to the point. Habakkuk 2 and 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. And what's the vision? Hey, the, uh, the prophecies that are written in the scriptures, man. You know, there, there's a set time for these prophecies to take place. Okay, and there's a build up to it. But I'm going to keep reading. But at the end it shall speak 
and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will, it will not tarry. Okay, let's go into that word tarry. Okay, um, Terry, Strong's H4102, it means to linger, Terry, wait, delay. Okay, and it says, though it Terry, wait for it. So it takes time for these prophecies to come to pass, man. You know, there's a, like I said, there's a build up to it. This prophecy has to take place for, in order for this prophecy, you know, to come, come to pass, you know, so it, it's always, you know, a little, it's a, it's a, it's a wait time for these prophecies to come to pass. They just don't, they just don't come, you know, straight away, straight away like that. No, it takes time. Like I said, okay. But it says, wait for it. Hey, if you're waiting for something, what are you doing? You're being, you're ultimately being patient for it. Okay. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And like I said in Matthew, you know, the coming of our Lord will surely come, you know, you know, though, it, though it's been a while, you know, all the way up, you know, till, you know, the prophets came on the scene, you know, saying that our Lord was going to come back. It's been a while, you know, since then, but it's going to surely come, man. You know, and that's where many people got getting messed up because it tarries. You know, it takes time for these prophecies to come to pass. You know, and they end up falling to the world because they don't have the patience. You know, they can't endure, you know, the trials and tribulations, man. They can't endure it. And hopefully, you know, us men of the Lord, you know, he puts the spirit on us, you know, to endure it too, man. Because we want to be found worthy to, you know, uh, be saved, man. Okay. And like I said, you know, these people, they think that, you know, the prophecies are supposed to take place when they want it to take place. Nah, man. No, you have to wait on the Lord, man. Yahweh. Because ultimately, Yahweh, not even Yahweh Shai knows when he's going to come back. You know, he has to get orders from his father to come back. Okay, so let's get that, actually. Matthew 24 and 36. 24 and verse 36. It's like you. Um. Okay, like right, right. Let's start at uh, verse thirty-six. Like you, Matthew twenty-four and verse thirty-six. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also come the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, and the coming of the Son of Man is, you know, the, ultimately the coming of our Lord Yahweh man. And Yahweh doesn't even know when he's going to come down, you know. Only the Father Yahweh knows. Okay. So how much more, you know, Yahweh, how much more shall we wait? You know, if our, our Lord Yahweh who we look up. You know, as a role model to us, man, we should, you know, be so like we should, um, you know, be patient just as our Lord is, man. We look up to him. Right. So um, let's get another scripture here. And um, let's get James. Five. And. Seven. OK, this is James five and seven. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of, of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Verse eight, be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Right. And that's just that's, the scripture speaks for itself, man. Just, you know, adding to that point to, you know, be patient for the coming of our Lord, man. We have to continuously endure, you know, and keep doing the works until the coming of our Lord, man. So we can be found, you know, worthy to be saved, man, and not be destroyed. Okay, and you, we can't get weary in doing this work. Okay, and um, some men have gotten weary in doing this work, man. And that's not the spirit you we should you know we should be in. 
though we do get demons on us sometimes, you know, but we have to fight those demons ultimately and you know, do what is right. So let's get uh, Galatians. It's like it. Um, Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Right, so do, don't do don't be weary in well-doing. What is the well-doing? Hey, doing the will of the Heavenly Father, doing His work. You know, following the uh, the commandments, you know, the laws, statutes, and commandments, written in the scriptures to the best of our ability. You know, that's well-doing. Okay, so you know, don't get tired of doing doing what's right in the uh, in the sight of the heavenly Father. Don't get, you know, how to say disenchanted in this truth, man. That's why we should not always pray that the that the heavenly Father, you know, keep His Holy Spirit upon us, man. I'm gonna keep reading for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, and we're gonna if we keep doing what's right in the eyes of the heavenly Father, we shall reap you no, know, you know, salvation, man. We're gonna reap you no know, everlasting life. No, that's only if we faint not. Like if we just keep doing the works, if we keep doing, you know, the right thing in the sight in the, of the heavenly Father, man. Okay. So this, I'm gonna get a real quick precept to that. You know, this this precept goes really well with you know, the precept that I just read out. Okay, so this is Second Chronicles. Fifteen and verse seven. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Okay, so all the work that we're doing, all the labor of love that we're doing in the name of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh shall be surely rewarded, man. You know, and ultimately we're going to reap that, that salvation, man. That sweet salvation. <laughs> you know, but we just have to <clears throat> constantly endure. You know, constantly doing the work, constantly, you know, um, you no know, carrying our cross, man. You know, for it says, like I like I just read, he that endured to the end, he shall be saved. OK, so we have to wait and endure in this truth for the coming of our Lord, man. And hopefully, you no, know, we'll be accounted you know, to being saved. OK, and um, I'm just going to get this last precept here. In Ecclesiasticus, it's like, you know, um, right, Ecclesiasticus, let's get two, Ecclesiasticus two, and let's go 14, because this is the, you know, hopefully this will be my last precept, you know, but, um, um, this is you know, ultimately they're going to be the um how to say it, the future of you people that have lost you know that patience. You know, you couldn't wait no more for the coming of our Lord. So you just went back out into the world and started, you know, just part participating back in this in this society, man, and you no know, sinning. You know, having no cloak for your sins. Okay, so this is Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 2 and 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Okay, and it says, woe is death and destruction. And that's what's coming to you, coming to the uh, the people that have, you know, lost that patience, man. And, you know, fell out into the world. You know, and the Lord is going to visit you with death and destruction. That's why it says war to you. Lord is, is going to visit you, man, and it's not going to be a pleasant visit. You know? No, but hopefully that lesson was ed this lesson was edifying and that it was easy to be understood by the elect. And I just want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakhakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom.